Welcome back to the news today. A diplomatic storm is brewing between Israel and El Salvador, which is reportedly considering moving its diplomatic presence from Tel Aviv to Ramallah. Israel named the El Salvador embassy as one of five, including Philadelphia, that will close due to foreign ministry budget cuts. It comes as Jerusalem is having diplomatic rows with Sweden as well as Brazil. Here with me to discuss further are Avi Pazner, former Israeli ambassador to France. Good Hello, evening. Good evening to you. And it's Haq Levanon, former Israeli ambassador to Egypt. Good evening. Good evening. Well, Mr. Prisoner, let's start with you. Maybe calm things down or not. How dramatic is this decision, really? What would it mean for Israel, for El Salvador, to make this move? First of all, I see here a situation where Israel is shooting its, in its own foot, okay? This decision to close five embassies and consulate, I think, is irresponsible, okay? And uh, it doesn't cost that much. If you look, for example, at the defense budget, so you can find a few million dollars to keep Israel's embassy. At the time, as you said, we have a role with Sweden. We have a role with Brazil. We have a role with the European Union. I mean, we, we have a role with the whole world. <laughs> and then we close five embassies. So I hope very much that San Salvador will not transfer its embassy from Tel Aviv to Ramallah. But I hope also that the foreign ministry will be intelligent enough to understand what the result of these cuts are now. Because today, the diplomatic front is as important as an army front, okay? This defends Israel in the world. And I say, we are making mistakes here, and I hope it's still time, still time to take ourselves and to cancel this decision. Well, let's talk about really this decision. How much does it really cost to hold this uh, embassy? Because the really official explanation is it's a budget cut, but many people are wondering, could this be a political move as well? Well, first of all, I'm not sure that this is the final decision yet. Uh, yes, there are talks, you know, that they would like to, f to close five uh, representations, uh, embassies and consulate. Uh, and this, the reason is because there is a pressure coming from the Ministry of Finance uh, for budget cuts. Uh, this is not the first time, by the way, that you are facing such situation. But I saw uh, in, in your preamble, you know, that you included Brazil and you included Sweden, etc. I think that you we have to make the difference. If, if we're talking about Brazil, for instance, this is a different story. Nothing to do, you know, with the budget. This is a question which, in my mind, is really unusual. Uh, when a, a country decided to nominate an ambassador and they send the uh, request for the agreement, for the consent of the, the government, basically 99%, you know, there is no problem. I mean, usually you don't make a problem with this. But here we saw that there is some interferences coming from Israel and from Brazil. So this is a different story which make the question with Brazil and the nomination of the Israeli ambassador something really peculiar and really, really unusual. As far as for the closing of the, of the consulate and the embassies, I think that this is the wrong time, really. We are facing a huge you know, pressure coming from everywhere in the world. Secondly, every, every single Israeli do understand, maybe not enough, but do understand that today, you know, the fight is not only on the battlefield. The fight is also in the forefront of the explanation of the Hasbara, uh, how, you know, you convince your counterpart about the justification of your case. So this is very important that our people, the diplomats, will be at this battlefield, they will be at the forefront to explain whether it will be Salvador or will be Ukraine or, 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 or elsewhere. Salvador has a vote exactly in the United Nations like the United States. And potentially, if the uh, mission is moved to Ramallah, could this strengthen the Palestinian case um, at the cost of the Israeli one? I, I think it would be marginal between you and me. I mean, it would be marginal. Everybody would understand that it is a step of protest on the part of uh, El Salvador. But I would like to take uh, what you said, uh, Ambassador Lebanon, one step further. I think one of the problems we have that we do not have a foreign minister today, 
Okay. You, you do, do not have. have. Yeah, it's the prime minister. On the paper, is, you Yeah, have. you have the prime minister, the prime minister, who is also interior minister, who is also economic minister, yes. who is also communication minister. You don't have today a full time foreign minister to take care of the foreign minister. You don't have. And the result is when, that when there is a battle with the Ministry of Finance over budget, you have nobody to defend because the prime minister, he has, of course, also to accommodate the finance minister, you see? So this is part of the problem. I hope that you are right when you say that the final decision is not made. I hope they will not make decision. I remember in the past when I was ambassador in France, they wanted to close the consulate in Marseille, okay? Also for no. budgetary reasons. Today I stood also? on my real legs, okay, to prevent that. And until today, I'm very pleased we have a consulate in Marseille. Israel has to open new embassies, to open new consulates and not to close them. By, by the way, uh, Mohammed, I, I would like you know, just to clarify one point. We're not talking about, if we're talking the case of San Salvador or the others, we're not talking about cutting off the diplomatic relations. This is not the case. The diplomatic relations will continue. The representation will not be there. Secondly, El Salvador says whether it will be in Ramallah or in Cairo. So this is, this is a kind of, I would say, putting pressure on the Israeli government in order to decide not to close El Salvador. What I'm saying is, if you will take the budget, because this is a budget cut, see what happened you know, with the Ministry of Defense. I'm not talking about the people who are retired and taking you know, more money than before. I'm talking about the budget. So for God, really for God's sake, I mean, few millions uh, you can find, you know, for the foreign ministry and to keep those consulate and embassies in a, order to fight. It is a few millions. You know, when you have a military budget, which is 60 billions, 60 billions a year, okay, which is okay. We need a strong defense budget. But then you look at the budget of the foreign ministry, which is nothing, negligible. Why is that? Because I, do, I think that Israel, from its inception, had in mind that the main danger coming is a military danger, a security danger. And people do not understand well that on the diplomatic front, there is also a war going on. And you can see how we suffer today. For example, what's going on in Europe. It is said that they are considering new measures against Israel, okay? How, how, do, you, how do you fight that? You fight it by having a presence, by talking to people. I have a reason why, Mohammed. I think that this is our fault. Because in Israel, nobody cares about the diplomats. Because nobody understands really what we are doing abroad. And we are doing really, really, really a great job. Our people are fighting day and night. But nobody knows here. And secondly, we do not in the foreign ministry to make of this a big fast, you know, like the army or like anybody else. But the problem is still the problem. We have to confront pressure and buy situations against Israel, and we need diplomatic soldiers. And those people have to be in the forefront to struggle, to fight. You know, to continue on both your points, we discussed a lot about anti-Semitism today on the show and BDS movement. It seems to be that Israel should have realized a long time ago that the military threat is not the only one that it's facing. Mm -hmm. And with the rising left in El Salvador in recent years, which has caused a kind of a sever in the ties between yeah. Israel and Latin American uh, allies, uh, some people are worried that Israel closing its embassy there will give rise to anti-Israel voices in the country. Now I will tell you it's not only El Salvador who is going to the left it's in Latin America. Most of the continent is on the left today, most of it, okay? And you mentioned the BDS before. And I told you about the fact that there is no foreign minister full-time job. But it's worse than that. They have taken the BDS issue from the foreign ministry and given it to the police ministry or the interior security ministry, as it is called, to Minister Erdan, who has got a budget of 100 million shekel, 100 million shekel, almost as big as the budget of the foreign ministry to fight BDS. But he does not have the instrument to fight BDS. He will not fight BDS with the police, okay? The foreign ministry does have the people does have the knowledge how to fight BDS, doesn't have the budget. 
Gentlemen, I'm sure there's so much more to say, and I want to hear what both of you have. Uh, more we should to strengthen the foreign ministry <laughs> by all means. A Absolutely. Great, a great point to close with. Thank you very much, gentlemen, Thank for being you. with us Thank tonight. You. And Wikipedia celebrated its 15th anniversary this week, a celebration to end with is good, prompting a slew of commentaries on how the free open platform resource fundamentally changed the way we access information. Wikipedia's influence cannot be overstated, having supplanted Britannica as the dominant reference work in English. I-24 News correspondent Shani Nakhshoni has the story. Wikipedia celebrated its 15th birthday on Friday. With about 80,000 volunteer editors across the globe, the People's Encyclopedia changed the way we consume knowledge. Maybe today we take it for granted, but not so long ago information wasn't something that with everybody's reach. So, what do you say, Joey? You get the whole set of encyclopedias for $1,200. That works out to just 50 bucks a book. $1,200? <laughs> You think I have $1,200? <laughs> Wikipedia was founded in 2001 in English, and nowadays it operates in hundreds of languages. Every day, 7,000 new entries are written, and every hour, an average of 15,000 edits are carried out. It's the seventh most surfed website in the world, and it includes 35 million entries, all for free. We've obviously come a long way, but there's a huge amount of work to do, particularly in the languages of the developing world, but also, even in the really large languages, there's lots of work to do in terms of improving the quality, uh, expanding to more and more uh, obscure topics, and, and just basically trying to have some fun building something that the world is amazed by. It is well known that knowledge is power, and in places like North Korea, where sources of knowledge are controlled by the government, this kind of encyclopedia is used to change the reality, as liberating activists sent USBs loaded with Wikipedia data via balloons. The, the struggle for freedom in North Korea is as important as the struggle for freedom everywhere else. And this is a very innovative way, um, controversial for sure, but innovative way of getting information and hacking the North Korean regime. In another case, Russian authorities briefly banned the entire Wikipedia site because of a page relating to drug use, which the site had refused to edit or delete. And in the Middle East, the Wikipedia entries are just another ground for war using a keyboard instead of weapons for those who want to rewrite history or tell it from their point of view. Moetzi Tiesha, in conjunction with My Israel, uh, has arranged an uh, instruction day for wiki editors to teach people how to edit in Wikipedia, which is the number one source of information today in the world. With the progress of technology and internet almost everywhere, information transmitted through sites like Wikipedia is the cause of a great change across the world. We can only imagine what the world would look like on Wikipedia's 30th birthday and how big a contribution the online encyclopedia will make to our daily lives. Yes, and I'm joined now by our own Wikipedia of Knowledge on Culture, <laughs> Shani Nakhshoni. Good evening, Good Shani. Good evening, Ayman. How are you? Good. I'm happy to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Shani, Wikipedia has become a household name. Journalists use it. Mm -hmm. We know it's big, but I doubt that any of us really realize the massive scale yes. of Wikipedia. It's it's a massive scale, as you just said. Uh, 35 million entries uh, in this Wikipedia, about 300 different languages. It's amazing. And uh, uh, Jimmy Wells, the founder of uh, Wikipedia, just uh, told in an interview that he remembers the beginning where he used to wake up in the middle of the night and uh, he used to go and check the editing that people use, were making in the, in the Wikipedia entries and he was worried that someone might sabotage mm -hmm. an entry. Uh, and today he says, we cannot do it anymore. We can't really uh, wake up in the middle of the night because, you know, 35 million different entries in three th uh, 300 languages, it's very difficult to uh, <laughs> to follow uh, everything. But I think that uh, one of the things that are m the most amazing about Wikipedia is uh, the the community thing about it, that every editor is volunteering and everyone does it with a sense of uh, um, commitment to knowledge. 
I think this is the most amazing part, and it's very, very different from what we're used to in the capital society of the Western world. And speaking of capitalism, we know that Wikipedia doesn't use ads, and uh, it has made it uh, face some really financial uh, strife before. Yes, and they did ask for uh, donations, and uh, sometimes they, they manage to uh, uh, continue with those donations, but we know that they always need more money to operate, and uh, I think that this is a very, very important uh, uh, thing to, uh, to donate to, because we saw that uh, all around the globe, wherever knowledge is uh, arriving to, things are happening, the world is uh, marching forward, and it's important. Shanina Khshoni, our favorite donation to the news today. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for being with me tonight. And that's it for us. The news today is done. We'll be back here tomorrow, same time, same place, from the Jaffa Port. Join us then. Good night.